Hallelujah. We are so glad, so grateful to be in the house of the Lord again. We want to welcome you this evening to our midweek broadcast. We are just ecstatic to be here again. It is such a privilege to be in the house of the Lord. And we want to thank you wherever you are for tuning in. Those of you that are watching by Facebook and YouTube, we say welcome and God bless you. On behalf of our senior leaders, Apostle Rod and Prophetess Selena Stevenson and the entire Rivers family, we say get ready, get ready for an encounter with the Lord tonight. We want to just give you an opportunity to give to the ministry tonight. And, you know, there is so much encouragement in the word of God. So many promises when we are faithful to God and when we honor him. We understand that when we honor the Lord with what we have, the promise is, is that our barns will be filled with plenty and our wine vats will be bursting, meaning we'll simply have more than we more than enough. We will have everything that we need. Why? Because God gives to the generous and he's going to see to it that you have everything that you need so that you can be generous on every occasion. That's according to 2 Corinthians 9 and 11. So just be encouraged by the word of God. We have got to hold to the truth of God's word, even where it is concerning our tithes and our offerings. So be faithful, saints. Be faithful to the Lord and honor him. The Lord says that the righteous give without sparing. Let that just sink in for a minute. The righteous give without sparing. Are you one of his righteous ones tonight? I know that you are. You can give tonight by texting your gift. The number to text is 231-221-2160. That number again is 231-221-2160. 
Just text the word give and be sure to include a dollar amount. You may also give by uh, using Cash App. That is dollar sign R-O-L-W Muskegon. One more time, that's dollar sign R-O-L-W Muskegon. You may also give when you visit our website at R-O-L-W Muskegon.com. One more time, that is R-O-L-W Muskegon.com. You can also give and show your generous support to the ministry by making a check or money order payable to R-O-L-W. Again, that's R-O-L-W. The mailing address is 1550, that's 1550 East Lakedon Avenue in Muskegon, Michigan. 1550 East Lakedon Avenue in Muskegon, Michigan. We thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your faithfulness. Your generosity and your faithfulness keeps this ministry thriving, keeps this ministry in the place and in the posture where it can be about its father's business, about our father's business, which is the commission of spreading and advancing the gospel. And we're glad to do it. So thank you for partnering with us. We also want to invite you to partner with our worship team. So we're going to receive them now as they come before us and lead us in praise and worship. And after that, you're going to receive a powerful, powerful teaching tonight. So prepare your hearts and get ready to receive. God bless you. The altar is open. Come on, the altar is open. Sometimes we need something and we think that we got to wait to the end of the service uh, to get what we need from God. Uh, but I'm telling you this morning uh, that you will be the one that will say, I'm going to break outside of my comfort zone this morning. Uh, and I'm going to come to the altar. And I'm going to stay here, God. Uh, and I'm going to seek your face. Uh, I'm going to lift my hands and praise. Uh, I'm going to shout out to God with a voice of this morning uh, because I know that what I need is in this hey, that's why you came this morning uh, because what you need is in him hey. Hey. lift up your voice sing out loud make a joyful noise unto our God call on the name who's able to pray for he is worthy of all our praise lift up your voice sing out loud make a joyful noise our God, call on the name who is able to say, for he is worthy of all. Lift up, lift up your voice. Sing, sing out loud. Make a, make a joyful noise unto our Call on, call on the name who is able to say, for he is worthy of all. Come on and lift up your voice. Sing out loud. Make a joyful noise unto our God. Call on the name who is able to for he is worthy of all our praise. Lift up your voice, hey. sing out loud. Yeah. Make a joyful noise unto our God. Call on the name who is able to say. For he is worthy hey. of all our praise. Come on our and lift up, lift up your voice. Sing, sing out loud. Sing your song unto the Lord this morning. Call on the name who is able to say. For he is worthy of all We're gonna we're gonna lift up our voice. Lift, lift, lift up your voice. Hey, lift up your voice. Come on, lift up. Lift up your voice. Lift. 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 Lift up your voice. Yes. Lift up your voice. Jesus. Lift up your voice. We call you. Lift up your voice. We sing. Lift up your voice. Lift our praise. Lift our worship. Glory to God. Lift up. You're gonna lift up your voice. Lift him up. Come on. Lift up your voice. Sing. Lift up your voice. Sing. Lift up your voice. Sing. Song. The word of the Lord said, I sing a new song to you this morning. I don't know what your song is, but Mary had a song. Come on, sing out loud. I love you, Jesus. Come on, sing out loud. I want you, Jesus. What's 
is so much worthy of all our praise on tonight and every night. Amen. And so welcome to the broadcast tonight. Welcome to our midweek Bible study. And I was thinking earlier today uh, pertaining to the word mid. Um, do you not know that we are midway through our summer season? And so that might be important for those of you who um, have issue with the fall and the different seasons that are um, coming up. So I wanted to just take the opportunity to just um, encourage you to go out and do something um, special for this summer in the time that we have allotted and the time that we have left. And so you might not be able to go on vacation, but you can partake of the things that we have here in our city and surrounding areas. And so you might want to just um, go and ride an Aquastar cruise. You might want to go to the drive-in. That's always a fun excursion. You may want to just um, pack up a picnic, um, go get some ice cream. And so I just wanted to just encourage us as I thought about that, we're halfway through. And so we want to take opportunity. There's festivals going on um, throughout our city. And so let's make summer last and stretch it out a little bit longer. Amen. And so that is my public service announcement for tonight. And so my name is Minister Marlon McCrary. I have some uh, awesome and anointed senior leaders by way of Apostle Rod and Prophetess Selena Stevenson. And so we, the Rivers family, the Rivers body, um, want to just invite you out Sunday mornings with us to sup and fellowship. Um, and so please come out Sunday morning. And so without further ado, I'm going to get right into the message tonight. And then we'll just see what thus saith the Lord. Amen. So. Holy Spirit, we thank you for tonight. 
what you have to speak to us, what you want to show us. And so our ears are open to hear what your spirit is saying. And so we thank you, Holy Spirit, that we will be doers of this word and not just hearers only. We thank you, Father God, that you will cause our heart to align with your heart, that you will cause us to be a people after your own heart, to pursue your heart. Father God, to align with your heart posture, that you would even soften our hearts, Father God. And we just thank you, Father God, for you said you would give us a new heart. And so we pursue tonight your heart posture, Father God. And we thank you, Father God, that and we ask that you break our heart with the things that break your heart and the matters that are on your heart, Father God. We want to come into that place and we want to reside right there in the place of your heart chambers. And so tonight, we thank you for the heart of the Father. We thank you for the heart of the Lord and for the heart of the Son. And so we thank you that you help us to be pursuers and a people after your own heart tonight. In Jesus' name and for his sake, amen and amen. And so the title for tonight's message is Pursuing the Heart of God. He's got a, a, a blessed heart. He's got a pure heart, amen. Pursuing the heart of God. And so in order to pursue and receive God's heart, we must first know what his heart is, how he thinks about a matter, what weighs upon his heart, what's important to him, what he values, what breaks his heart, what makes his heart smile and leap. Amen. We want to be a people in pursuit of the heart of God. And so in order to receive his heart, we got to know it. And so I've been uh, reflecting on this latest judicial uh, decision that has been made and I'll be quite honest, it's not something I thought I would see in my lifetime, but listening to some of the statements that individuals are making just is a telltale sign that they have no clue about what's important and what's on the heart of the Father. They're so disconnected, and so you can gauge that just by the statements that come out of their mouth, because the word of the Lord tells us, Matthew 12 and 34, what proceeds out of a person's mouth is indicative to what is in a person's heart. Amen. And so I thought about that when I hear these statements about when people feel like they have a right to end a life that's sacred that the Father has ordained. And they say things like, it's my body and I can do what I want to do. It's just like, you just don't even have a clue. Because first of all, it's not your body. Your, that body was purchased with a price. It be, it's supposed to give God glory. And so I, I think about how disconnected people are from the heart of God, the culture, their calisthony heart. And so we want to be a people in pursuit of the heart of God. And so I, I thought about how it's so ironic to and so deceived. The word of the Lord says also in Matthew 15 and 19 that out of the heart comes evil thoughts, evil conversations, murder. And so those things come from a heart. And so when a person says, um, you know, they feel it's okay to terminate, they say, a, a pregnancy, not understanding or even recognizing an omen up to the fact that you're not just terminating a pregnancy, you're terminating a life, a God-ordained life. And so I'm not beating anybody up, but I just want to talk about the things that are on our heart. Amen. And so um, we want to understand. And I thought, how is it that if a woman were to carry a baby for nine months, have that beautiful bouncing baby, boy or girl, and somebody take that child's life, we would say that person is a murderer. But we don't see that if we ourselves take that life away, then we don't consider that murder. And so that's just so how the culture and the heart posture of the culture is deceived and it's wicked and deceitfully wicked. And so it's like we have to know God's heart. We have to pursue it. And we're going to talk about tonight, how do we know um, what is pure and undefiled? What is the heart of the Father? And so we know that God's heart is for life because life is um, ordained and originates with God. So one thing that's important to God's heart is life because that's how we all get to the planet. And so it's not just because of a government or legislation, God ordains and put those cells and that sperm and that egg to come together. That's supernatural. And so God has plans. God is, a, his heart is for life. Amen. And so we have to understand it's wicked to say that this belongs to me. And another thing I thought about, and sometimes people make this excuse, oh, what if a woman is raped? And that's a tragic thing to happen to a woman. 
But if you know the heart of God, who says you have to keep that 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 um that child? You could give that child up for adoption where so many people are wanting to have life, but also if you knew the heart of God, if you knew the redemptive heart of God, you would know that God could give you a love for that child, even despite the circumstance of how that child got here. And so we don't understand that. Just like even when the word tells us when it comes to divorce, we say irreconcilable differences. But Jesus said plainly in his word, we divorce is because the hardness of our hearts. We're unwilling to align with God's heart for our hearts to be softened and pricked. Amen. So we have to understand the heart of God. Life is valuable to um, the father. And so we have to pursue and be a people after God's own heart. Amen. Because life is important. That's the heart of God. He's given us. He came that we might have life and he's given us all things pertaining to life and godliness. Amen. And he wants us to live and not die. And so, like I said, I don't want to beat this subject up, but I begin to ponder and just meditate like, wow. These people are angry. I've heard stories about pro-life centers being destroyed and damaged and um, just so much violence is occurring at these centers. And you would think, why are you so aggressive about somebody wanting to save a life? But yet I read a story about a government official, instead of beefing up security for the pro-life centers who are being destroyed and damaged, he um, made a call to beef up security at abortion clinics. And I thought that's such a depraved heart. You're not going to make sure that the sanctity of life is protected, but you'll make sure out of a wicked heart that the places that are killing life, it's not the, it's not the heart of God. It's deceitful and wicked. Amen. But tonight the Holy Spirit wants us to understand we need to be a people that have a purity of heart. We need to be a people after God's own heart. Amen. And so another thing about the heart of God and what's important to him is God is a God of family. Life or is or, or, or origins originates with the father and so does the family. And so I don't care how many surgeries you have. There's so much confusion out there. Um, and like I said, I'm not it might sound like I'm bashing uh, one um, situation or one sin over the other, but I'm not. I just want to talk about what is out there rampant um, in the earth. And so. I don't care how many surgeries you ha you have and how many hormones um, that you have adjusted. You can't produce the family that God has ordained and orchestrated in his word. Two men cannot bring forth life. I don't care if you do adopt a child. Two women cannot. God's plan is for man, woman, husband, wife. The heart of God is for families. And he told us that back in Genesis 1 and 28. Amen. That we will, should be fruitful, multiply and fill the earth and replicate the earth through his family structure. The heart of God is for life and abundant life thereof. Amen. And so unless your conscience is seared, this should be resonating. And when people like I said, when people make statements, it's because they're disconnected from um, truth in God's heart. They're in deception. And so, like I said, I don't want you to feel like we're not a people of love or tolerance. And so if you're listening to this message, I want you to know that we are a people of love, a people of trust and a people of truth. And so we would love to pray for you and visit the scriptures so that you can know and have your heart changed and align and be a person after God's own heart. Because truth is important and there's not a lot of truth being propagated, but we are a people of love and trust and truth. And so. The word of the Lord says in um, Proverbs 16, verse 6 and 8, that that truth will come to purge that iniquity that's lying in your heart. So truth is important. God's word is how we understand his heart, the truth of his word. So if his word says something is evil or if he says something is wicked or deceitful, then that's just what it is. But his heart is always redemptive. He always is long suffering. He's always patient, wanting all to come to repentance. Amen. All of us. And so tonight, God wants us to be a people after his heart. And so we have to be like David. We have to say, Lord, create in me a clean heart so I can be a person in, in a right spirit, a right heart posture. And so that word um, purge or purify when we say creating us a clean heart, it means to purify or to free up from mixture. And so it's mixture, it's a mixture heart and mindset when government and legislators and lawmakers 
cause all this chaos and they say one thing is um, right when the, the word of the Lord says it's evil. They call good evil and evil good. And so purify our hearts. We need to pray that prayer. I think that's James 4 and 8. Lord, cause our heart to align with your heart. Amen. And so that we can run after your heart. We can draw nigh to your heart. We can understand your heart. Hallelujah. So we are to, the word even tells us to love the Lord with all of our heart, all of our mind, and all of our soul, all of our being, all of our strength. That's Matthew 22 and 37. So, and one way we do that is by that place of truth. And like I said, if God says something's evil, then it's evil. If he says don't do it, don't do it. If he says don't go there, don't go there. If he said life is what I ordained, that's what he means. But he is a God that has a heart that wants to find those who will pursue him and pursue his heart. And so 2 Chronicles 16 and 9 says, the eyes of the Lord search the whole earth in order to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. Fully committed to him. He is seeking those who have a heart after him, whose hearts are tender and not hard and not callous and not deceived and not selfish. That is the heart of the father that we need to be pursuing because he's looking and he's looking for people that will run hard after him, that will pursue him, that will run the race set before him, that will run towards his precepts, run towards uh, his, the truth of his word, that will run into his holy place. He's looking for a people throughout the earth so he can strengthen their hearts and align their hearts with things that matter to him and that weigh upon his heart. Amen. And so we even know there's a blessing that comes with having a pure and a purged heart. Matthew 5 and 8 said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the pure in agenda in their heart, the focus of the heart being pure. Amen. Those people are blessed. They shall see God. They understand God. They line up with God. They fully commit their heart to God, how we could say that. And so... um. Really quickly, um, we can't really talk about pursuing the heart of God without talking about the life of David. And he's one of those um, really riveting characters throughout the word of the God because there's so much that can be said about him. It's not that he was not a man who failed. It's not that he was not a man who sinned. Um, and most of the, when I thought about most of the messages that I've heard about um, David regarding what made him a man after God's own heart, um, most of the sermons and teachings I heard would always say David was a man after God's own heart because David was quick to repent. And you know what? That's true. That is a pure heart when you can own up to when you take responsibility um, for something. When you say, God, I messed up. I sinned and you don't call it a gray area. You say it is what it is. That is a pure heart. That is a repentful heart. And David had that. And like I said, it doesn't mean he didn't slip and mess up and do some horrific things. But God himself said, David is a man after my own heart. And so I want us to examine that tonight. Why would God say that? Knowing the sins that David committed, why would the father say that? And so I want us to examine and contrast the life of King David versus King Saul. You know, there's distinct differences that we can see from the word of God, God that will highlight and showcase why David was a man after and pursuing the heart of God. And so two, the tale of two kings will say it. And so call, King Saul, God said, you know what? I, I got to reject him. I got to take my anointing. I got to take my validation off of him because of the things that are in his heart. And so 1 Samuel 15 verses 22 to 23 um, Samuel, who was the prophet of God, he's given the word of the Lord to King Saul. And he's saying, you know what? It's over. It's done. It's a wrap. The word of the Lord says unto you, because you have rejected, that's a key point um, in understanding the heart of, of God and pursuing his heart. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord. Because you have rejected my heart, Parsha, because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you. And so that stood out to me is because it's telling us that to be a people after God's own heart, we have to value his word. 
Amen. And so King Saul didn't do that. And he was given specific instructions about what to do as the people faced the opposition in the place that, that they were in. And so um, Samuel didn't under, he didn't value and honor the word of the Lord. That's another key in um, observing and pursuing the heart of God, honoring and valuing his word. And even not just the written word, but the word that comes from God's servants. And so that's what King Sam, it was a slight, subtle but um, disobedience or heart disconnect, but it showed that Samuel was more concerned with doing what he wanted to do. He wasn't concerned with pleasing the father and it's impossible to please the Lord without faith and faith in him alone. And so we understand that Saul was rejected. God said, I'm, I reject you because you did not obey the word. And so, um, he was rejected and God said to him, you didn't value it. You didn't honor. And so that's the key for us. And so um, I think first Samuel 10 and eight talks about what was taking place. And so Samuel told um, King Saul to wait until Samuel um, came back to the place where they were to wait before they proceeded in a place of warfare. And he said, you wait, cause I am going to um, offer up sacrifices before we go forward. It's important because I am the one that has been ordained and anointed to do this. So I need you to wait and see if you can follow instructions. I need you to wait until I get there. Cause surely he said, I'm coming. It may seem as though it may Terry, I'm coming. I need you to just wait. And so, uh, long story short, King Saul did not do that. He waited the seven day period. But he got a little bit anxious like Abraham. He tried to take things into his own hands and out of his heart. You know what? The prophet ain't here. I'm just going to go do this thing, even though I was told not to. And so God looks at that as a heart that does not honor instruction or honor his heart. And so um, long story short, that was what helped to cause the distinction between his kingship and the kingship of King David. And so David, on the other hand, he followed the instructions. Hallelujah. That's why he was a man. That was a, one of the many reasons, because there's many reasons that we'll talk about why he was called a man after God's own heart. But it says David, however, followed the instruction of the prophet. Two scenarios, two kings, prophetic word, one obeyed, one did not. And so that separated the wheat from the tear. That separated the callous heart, the stony heart from a soft, pliable teachable heart that honors his word and honors the heart of God. And so it says, um, second Samuel 24 verses 18 through 19, David, however, followed the instruction from the prophet Gad. That's how you receive a prophet's reward as you honor the office that a person walks in, honor the instructions that they give to us. And so it says, David built an altar to the Lord. That's another. David didn't try to take things. He built an altar to the Lord, but he did it because he was told to. He followed the instructions. He obeyed the instructions. Amen. Those are key nuggets for why David was called a man after God's own heart. I'm going to do what you tell me to do. I'm going to go where you tell me to go. Amen. And so it says David built an altar to the Lord and sacrificed burnt offerings, fellowship offerings. Amen. And so at the request at the, of the prophet's instructions. So he did what he was supposed to do. He didn't got out of, getting out of time or season. He waited and followed suit. Um, and I think um, that reference to verify that David did what he was instructed to do. He didn't like King Saul try to take matters into his own hand. Second Samuel 24, 18 and 19, it says, And Gad came that day to David and said, Go up and raise an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Arana, the Jebusite. So David went up at Gad's word, prophet Gad and God, the representation in Gad. So David went up at Gad's word as the Lord commanded. So David honored, hallelujah, the, the office and the prophet on the, and that anointing, amen. And so these are so many nuggets where we can glean from it and get wisdom on what will identify and distinguish us from being a people after God's own heart. And so I was also thinking about in contrasting David, King David from King Saul. Um, David just knew 
where his strength came from. He knew not to bite the hand that feed him. He knew not to go in his own strength. And like I said, we can look at many, many examples of where David missed it. But once he missed it, he got up, he cleaned himself, he uh, repented. He was quick to do that. But it says that David relied on God and he knew, according to Psalm 16 and 2, um, he said, I say to you, Lord, apart from you, I have no good thing. So he understood that God was the strength of his life. He aligned his heart. He worshiped the Lord. He allowed God to come into his heart as he was humble and said, God, I know everything I do is because of you. And apart from you doing it and helping me, I cannot do anything that I have done. And so David knew he trusted God. Hallelujah. And so he, David knew that's another key. David knew the, 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 the unfathomable word of the father. He knew he could, he could trust in it. He could rest in it. And so David knew that God helped him conquer that lion and God helped him conquer that bear and God helped him conquer that giant. And so David relied upon God. That's another way we can be found of people pursuing the heart of God, not relying on ourselves, not relying on the government, not relying upon our own wicked hearts, our deceitful hearts. We have to have a reliance and trust the truth of God and follow after his heart, be in pursuit of his heart. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what David did. And another thing about David, David was a worshiper. Worship captures the heart of God. David was a worshiper. He was not lifted up in pride. He knew to lay on his face and raise his hands. He, he knew to dance in public no matter who was watching. You know, I sent that a text out to my children this week. And I said, you know, I believe the Lord is saying we need to praise him and honor him and worship him in our time at home. And I said, we got to get it from this place of coming to church. You're here in the, in the sanctuary, but you might be looking at your cell phone. You might be thinking about what you're going to do after service. And you're so composed. Amen. You have to become undignified and worship God just like David. David didn't care. He said, I can get more indignant than this. And so I said, the same way you put that, that liberty on the football field, on the gym, God wants you to become loose from yourself and worship him. And I said, that's what I feel the Lord is saying, you know, because I had such a powerful expression of worship because the spirit of the Lord came and tabernacled with me. And so we have to be a people that pursues his heart by worshiping him because that draws the attention of God. When we worship him, there's a purification that comes upon us and we align and ascend to God's heart posture. And so whatever he says, then we're able to be strengthened and rely upon him and see things come from a godly perspective. David was a worshiper and he wasn't ashamed. And I thought that's another key. David was humble. He was intimate. He was not boastful, arrogant. He was, he understood the power of his praise and the power of worship. And so David acknowledged his sin. We talked about that. He was broken and repentant. That's a key. Another key. Be broken when you could not just laying the blame. But David was broken. It mattered to him how God viewed him and God. It mattered to how, what, how God thought about him. It mattered to David. These are keys of how we can pursue God's heart. God, let me be broken before you. If I'm getting too haughty, if I'm trying to exalt myself, Father God, change my heart. You said you'd give me a, a new heart in place of the stony, callous one. Create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit on the inside of me. Come into me and see if there's anything that is not like you, anything offensive, anything that is not aligned with your heart. Make my heart tender and pure and not be so quick to judge and point the finger. Cause my heart to be a heart of redemption, thinking about other people, not wanting them to get God, but wanting them to understand that who is pursuing and, and trying to apprehend them. Give us that kind of heart. That's how we become a people after God's heart. When we chase it, when we pursue it, amen. And so moving forward, I got maybe one other key I want to talk about and how we can tell um, the difference um, between if our heart is a King Saul heart or a King David. And so one thing about King David when the prophet Nathan, I believe his name, came to David and pointed out his sin to David, David didn't make excuses. And so he owned up to it. And that's how we get to Psalm 51. But Saul 
didn't own up to it. He said, well, the people, the soldiers, they did this, they did that. And I really did do what you told me to do. And I kept some sacrifice so that they could be given to the Lord. But really, you did what you wanted to do. You didn't do it the way God told you to. And so you didn't own up to it. It was they. They did it. The white man did it. My father did it. And I, they, this, that, and the other. God's heart is a heart that should be a, a truthful place. And it is a truthful place. Rather, our heart should be a truthful place as we align and pursue his heart. So in closing, I got a couple of things I want to talk about relative to how we can be um, a man or a people after God's own heart. And so this reference is found in Acts 13 and 22. And it really kind of blew me away because, like I said, I always talk heard that David was a man after God's own heart because David was quick to repent. And we already talked about that. That's true. However, if you visit Acts 13 and 22, and I got a couple um, translations that spoke to me, and it says, after and after God removed Saul, because we know that God said I, re I rejected Saul, and after God removed Saul, he's, God testified and said, I have found David son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. Why did he say that? He said, I found David a man after my heart. Why? Because he will do all my will. And I thought, Lord, I have never heard that before. It's right here in your word. And God says, you can be a people after my own heart when you do my will, not your will. That's why Jesus said, your will be done, even though it's a hard place. Father, if there's any other way we can go about this, not my will, but your will be done. God said, David, now that's a man after my heart. He going to do what I tell him to do. He ain't going to do what he want to do. He going to do what I want him to do. And so the NIV says he will do everything I want him to do. The Aramaic Bible translation says, or Aramaic, he says he should do all of my pleasure. So isn't it something to want to please the heart of God when you obey what he, the simple things? You know, we know we're going to mess up. We're not going to be able to do everything that he's already told us because we go back from our origin. There's a whole lot of things we have not done that he told us to do. But we can get in a line and run after his heart to say, Lord, going forward, help me to be a person that follows your instructions and obeys your will. He says, David is a man after my own heart because of what he'll do. Because he'll do what I tell him to do. I thought, Lord, that's so powerful. That's why David was a man of God's own heart. The Amplified says, he's a man after my own heart. It says in all caps, conforming to my will and purposes and who will do all of my will. So it means that you conform. You allow the Lord to form the posture of your heart. Even though you may not think um, this, that, and the other, you conform. And the Lord will transform that heart you have, and he'll cause your heart to be delighted in the things and desires of his heart. So they come together. He says he conforms to my will. He does my will. He seeks my will. He's quick to forget. He observes my word. He honors my word. He pursues me. He owns up to what he says. He'll do what I tell him to do. Amen. That is how we become a people after God's own heart. Hallelujah. And I thought that was so powerful. It, it made me think about the scripture um, of doing everything that God wants you to do. When Jesus said to the father, John 17 and four, he says, father, I have glorified thee on the earth. And he said, I have finished the work. Hallelujah. I finished the work that you gave me to do. I finished your will. I completed your will. I brought you glory. I did what you told me to do. Father, just like David, I pursued your heart. I did it, Father. I brought you glory. I finished the race set before me through hard times, through struggle, through strife, whatever I said. I For God I live, for God I die. My heart is to please him. Hallelujah. I have done what you told me to do. And so if there's some things out there that you, we've been kind of procrastinating about, we can get it back into pursuit. And what has God told you to do that you thought you have time to do and you've not been about your father's business? What can we do to align ourselves to please the heart of the father? And this is something I thought was so powerful another point about how David was a man after God's own heart fulfilling all God's will 
This reference is in Acts 13 and 36, and it says, For David, after he served his own generation by the will of God, fell on to sleep and was buried. So that's saying David did all he was supposed to do. He fulfilled the will of God. He served God's purposes. He did God's will. He served God's people. He served in God's house. He honored God and bought God glory by doing what God told him to do by serving in his generations. What will the generation say about you when the book is closed and when you're buried? Will you go empty? Will you have done and completed everything you're supposed to do? Or at least be in pursuit, at least being in a place of pursuing and asking the Lord to give you passion and cause you to run hard after him, to chase hard after him. Amen. It says David served in his generations. What will the generation say about us? Amen. What does our heart say about us? Do we want to be a people that bring God glory and, and align ourselves with his heart? And so there's some keys we talked about that. In order to be a people of God's own heart, we have to rely upon him and not do things in our own strength and out of time and out of season. We have to obey his commands, obey his word, obey his biblical authority. We have to honor the word of the Lord. We have to value instruction. We have to be quick to repent and forgive and to acknowledge when we miss it with humility and brokenness. We must worship him in spirit and worship him in truth. We must do the will of the God. We must serve um, uh, the Lord with gladness. We must serve in our generations, in our homes, our marriages, our families. We must serve and complete the work of God because Jesus said, it's finished, Father. I've done what you told me to do. And so on tonight, these are little keys and little nuggets um, that we can recognize if we are aligned with the matters of God's heart. If our heart is broken by the things that break his heart, this is how we can be a people in pursuit of the heart of God. And so that's all I have for us tonight. And so I'm going to pray for us because there's too many callous heart responses. There's too many uh, reprobate minds. There's too much disobedience. There's too much procrastination. There's too much aligning ourselves with this world and the culture's heart and the way that they're going. And so we can turn and go another direction, just like King David, that repentance. When he fell, he got back up. It's like, Lord, it's, it's, it's you I, I sin against and you only. Created me a clean heart, created me a pure heart, renew a right spirit. Break my heart. My heart is broken because I've sinned and I messed up and I didn't fulfill your will. And so tonight, Father God, we thank you for your heart and allowing us entry and access into your heart. Thank you for even some of us, you might have to break our heart when our heart is so heart, uh, heartless and cruel and cold, so disconnected and disassociated from your heart. Father God, renew and, and quicken us, God, so that we can run towards your precepts, run towards your word, so we can be a people of humility, so that we can serve the Lord, serve our generations, complete the work that you've given us to do. Father God, giving you glory. Help us to be a people that honor your word. Help us to be a people of truth and mercy and forgiveness. Help us to be a people that serve the Lord, serve our people, serve our country, serve the nations. Father God, create in us a new heart. Give us a new heart. Give us your heart that we can be a people called after you. And so, Lord, we thank you, Father God, that our heart is aligned with you. When you say we ought to hate something because that's what's on your heart, we hate it. When you say something is good, it's good. When you say something is evil, then it's evil. We make room for you to come in so our heart can flow and beat in rhythm and in a flow and in sync with your heart so that we beat as one that your heart is our heart and our heart is your heart. And so I bless your people tonight, Lord. Cause us, oh God, our hearts to be prick when we're becoming too familiar, when we're becoming too callous, too cold, too desensitized. Help us, Father God, to arrive at the place of what pleases you, what pleases your heart. And so, Father God, I thank you for tonight, this message. 
I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are causing us to have a new heart, a new mindset as we go about our day to day. We thank you for the heart and compassion of God. Jesus, you had a compassionate heart. We want to have a compassionate heart. We want to obey the Lord and serve the Lord with all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our will and all of our being. And so, Father God, we thank you for this in Jesus righteous name. And so, like I said, please come out Sunday morning to sup with us, to fellowship with us partake of this beautiful weather that we have been um, given and gifted. And so go out and just ask the Lord, go out and be a blessing to someone. Make sure your heart is not the heart of the culture, but you have the heart of the father. See you next time. Bless you. We'd love to have you here on Sunday morning. God bless you.